All right, everybody. Hello and welcome. So today we're going to be talking about some highlights from the beam weapon changes. I have chosen five weapons and we are going to take them all through the why would you use test. And I think they are all pretty exemplary. Uh, all the beam weapons overall, they were approved across the board. Uh, the baseline change to how beams function is back to ye olden days from when beams were become as gods. Uh, so let, let's just get into this a little bit. So, the first two weapons we're going to show off are the Quanta Vandal. Uh, the Quanta Vandal was already pretty good. Uh, its secondary fire remains very potent, but its primary fire is now also quite deadly. I'm um, using a viral build with it with Hunter Munitions, as you do. Uh, this works very, very well at like getting through heavy armor. Uh, regular enemies don't really survive it. And of course, whenever you're dealing with fodder enemies with this weapon, if you use your alt fire, that is a decent area explosion that is going to take care of enemies really easily. Uh, so that, it kind of speaks for itself that the Quanta Vandal's main fire is now more worth using even if you're not just detonating your alt fire. So that's very good. Uh, and then we have the Atomos. So the Atomos is the secondary version of a weapon that we're going to talk about in a bit that I think is probably the current best beam weapon in the game. Uh, this is very, very good. The gimmick with the Atomos has always been that you use Ruinous Extension with this weapon. No exceptions. If you're not using Ruinous Extension on this weapon, that is uh, so much worse, like to an insane degree. Uh, so the gimmick with the Atomos is that when you shoot an enemy, it will chain to another enemy, and the distance that you can shoot at is affected by Ruinous Extension. But also, Ruinous Extension increases the linking distance, meaning that you can link nearly an entire map if you're using Ruinous Extension. It is incredibly deadly. So in compact quarters, a la most of Warframe, this is absolutely fucking devastating. And I know it might seem... Like with the base stats that this weapon has with a 1.7 crit multiplier and a 15% crit chance that you're actually not probably supposed to build this for crit. But because of the access we have to primed secondary crit mods, uh, it turns out that this is actually quite good because the tick rate is incredibly fast. And I think you're going to see that in practice. So... With that stuff out of the way, let's get started. Also, it is worth noting that you can use full damage toxin if you wanted to, but I find having a little bit more status helps this weapon significantly. So, with that, Quanta Vandal is first. This is going to be incredibly easy. All of these weapons are going to have a very easy time with this test, and we'll show the alt fire first. Alt fire is still very good. I got to get rid of. Uh... Oh, also, one of the benefits to this weapon is that it has incredibly long range. There's some of the melt, melt, melt. Yeah, this beam weapon is, like, the most snipery of them, I suppose. And you can see it works very, very well. Uh, with that much crit was added to this weapon, like, and its ability to just 100% accuracy evaporate heads, uh, it, makes it, it makes it very, very good. It's a... Uh, it's a real solid thing. Uh, it has a very similar kill time to the Super Vandal, and this weapon is pretty outstanding at the current time. Uh, the regular Quanta does have a bit lower crit stats, but if you can't get a hold of the Quanta Vandal, uh, I'm sure just th that will suit you just fine. It's got appropriate DPS for its MR. Just based on the stats and my testing with this weapon, it's pretty plain to see that the regular Quanta will be pretty decent as well. Though, of course, worse, because Vandals are just strictly better versions. Now then, on to the Atomos. So the Atomos, it is worth noting, in this arena in specific, is at the greatest disadvantage. Because this arena is larger and more spaced out than you are ever usually going to find in Warframe. In a hallway, I think it's going to become clear what this weapon does. And you can see that that enemy got linked and died. But yeah, the thing about this weapon is that anyone standing next to one another gets hit. Like, I hit that guy behind me, and I was shooting the people in front of me. Like, it, it, it's that kind of thing. And Runa's Extension, just in, just in general, gives you... Like, see, see that guy? I'm hitting the guy on his left as well, behind this pillar. That, that's what this weapon does. Anyone within that radius around that enemy is going to get linked up and evaporated. It's 
very, very potent. Uh, if you want more examples of how absolutely insane the Atomos is, especially with large group fighting, uh, I was leveling it a lot on Hydron yesterday, which the stream archive for the full leveling and all that business is all up if you'd like to see it for more examples of this thing's mass murder capabilities. With that, let us switch to our next two weapons, which are the Ignis Wraith and the Synoid Gamma Core. So, everyone was really worried about the Ignis Wraith. I was worried about the Ignis Wraith. Turns out, nothing to be worried about. The beam changes overall are carrying these weapons because it's it's like how it used to be, essentially. Like that's this all it's really simple. It's like how it used to be, and beams used to be gods. I'll say again. Uh, so the Ignis Wraith, we have a pretty basic build. Uh, I will say specifically with the Ignis Wraith, there is a lot of shit that is viable here. Uh, specifically in this slot where I have heavy caliber. Heavy caliber is good. Prime Shred is good. This weapon lost its ability to pierce walls by default. So if you want punch through, that's a good way to get it back. And because this weapon is so much more efficient, adding Prime Shred is not going to hurt your ammo efficiency a lot. Uh, and, of course, you can always use Hunter Munitions. So there's a whole lot of ways to go with this. Uh, I was finding all of them to be totally viable. And we're just going to show off Prime Shred, I suppose, uh, for this one. Just so you can see how efficient it still is, even if you're using something like Prime Shred. So... There's that. And then also the Synoid Gamma Core. So for those of you that have been around a while, that have been around the block a little bit, the Synoid Gamma Core used to be the single best secondary in the entire game. It used to be the greatest. It gave, it has, of course, the Pseudoproc, which gives energy. It was giving that in a time when Zenerik didn't exist, just to exemplify how important it was that a weapon could give you energy at that time, and it was absolutely fucking insane. This weapon is now very good once again. Uh, it is definitely competing for some top slots just because of the huge versatility that this weapon can provide, and it has a pretty standard build. The crits on this weapon are very, very deadly. It can strip a lot of armor. There's a lot of good places to go with this. And one of the main advantages of this weapon, besides, of course, the energy that it's going to be giving you on a constant basis, uh, is that this weapon is also one of the most anti-nullifier weapons that exists in the game, which we are going to show off. Uh, so with that, I'm personally very excited that the Synoid Gamma Core is back. Uh, but let's show these off. Uh, the Ignis Wraith, I think everyone is blowing out of proportion. The nerf, quote unquote, because it's not that. That's not what happened at all, actually. Uh, that's actually not the case, as it turns out. Oh, there we go. Corrupted Ancient Stud. Like, have you seen how efficient this is? This is with Prime Shred, just so you know. Like, just to reiterate, this is with Prime Shred, which makes all weapons less ammo efficient. Like, this weapon can just go now. Like, I'm still going. With Prime Shred, this is Super Vandal levels of go. Which is pretty fucking impressive. Uh, it does very solid damage. With Corrosive, it's good at stripping armor. It procs a hell of a lot of Hunter Munitions, if you're going to use that mod. This weapon is still absolutely fantastic. The only thing that got nerfed about it was its ability to open boxes through walls. And for those of you that are looking for a new alternative for that, I would highly suggest you build Limbo, as he has a build that is specifically for opening all the boxes on a map. So that is incredibly good. Now let's mess with the Synoid Gamma Core. So the Synoid Gamma Core... Uh, it's so good. I'm just so happy it's back. Uh, this weapon also has, like, pretty solid range. And a little evaporate, dudes, you know. Uh, it is actually interesting to note uh, that this weapon, because it has magnetic innately, it also, it, it's a, a built as it is currently, it is a double reverse scaling weapon, I guess I'm going to say. Uh, in, in that, because it's magnetic and corrosive, it obliterates shields and armor at the same time. So, yeah. And also, r quick reminder, this weapon will be giving you energy while you're obliterating. So that's fantastic. 
Uh, it is still not the most ammo efficient thing in the world, but it is it no longer needs carrier and ammo mutation to be kept up. Uh, now you probably would be super fine just running like carrier with it. Uh, and of course, just to show real fast, like we're going to spawn some nullifiers so that you can get a feel for just how anti-nullifier this weapon is. Some leather shields get to full, of course. And this weapon fucking hates nullifiers. They're not gonna like it. Warning. Oh fuck. I can't believe you've done this. This weapon don't take no shit from no nullifiers. It takes exactly 0% shit from some nullifiers. They stand no chance. Like this thing was built to fuck nullifiers. So if you hate nullifiers, you like getting energy, and you like having a high damage weapon, I mean, look no further, honestly. Like, you want a bunch of corrosive and magnetic procs for, like, the few times you're fighting Corpus, that magnetic's on the side there, but mainly corrosive. It's fucking amazing. It's super good. And now, with that, we need to talk about the number one, the current top dog, I feel. So let's get to that. And that top dog is none other than the Amprex. So the Amprex has been good. It has been good in the past. It has continued to be pretty solid, but it is now, I would say, almost certainly one of the best weapons in the entire game. This weapon devastates, and it is absolutely worth at least this five form of build. Um, this, like the Atomos, takes a massive buff from Sinister Reach, increasing both its arcing distance and its general range. It appreciates both greatly, so I would highly advise you to get Sinister Reach. And, like the Ignis Wraith, uh, it can use Prime Shred, Heavy Caliber is fine. There's a lot of ways to go about this. Hunter Munitions, also, just like the Ignis Wraith, works perfectly fine. I think all those, cho yeah, those choices are totally, like, valid. Um, and this weapon is also quite efficient now. Uh, so Prime Tread does not obliterate its efficiency or anything. Uh, the Punch Through I find to be really, really good because then you're getting like this multi-arc, really deadly, just... It's a bad vortex for enemies. Uh, and the advantage that this weapon has in that it doesn't need to use two elemental mods because it is innately um, electric, so you can just add Toxin and get Corrosive, which is super solid. Or, of course, just add Heat and get Radiation if you're into that. I prefer Corrosive personally because I know 22% status in the past for beam weapons was jack shit for garbage nothing. But in the case now, 22%, not bad. It's like a Soma. You're going to get a lot of procs at like a 20% because just of the tick rate of these weapons are so goddamn good. So let's just show this thing off. Uh, it is a fucking monster. This, like the Atomos, this is not the ideal environment for this weapon, but it's goddamn angry. If you really want to see how pissed off this weapon is, you can watch the leveling stuff that I did yesterday, that big ass stream that I posted. But otherwise, let's let's show what this thing does. It's it's fucking angry, first of all. That guy on the right, fuck him. It's pretty fucking good. Like, did you see the arcing distance? That fucking sick arcing distance? Get yourself a Sinister Reach. Treat yourself. Like, without Sinister Reach? Totally worthwhile. It's a totally worthwhile weapon to use. With Sinister Reach? Goddamn angry. This is an electric fucking demon monster that don't take shit from no one. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, just kind of a wrap up of what I think are currently the best beam weapons uh, after these incredibly good changes. Uh, it is worth noting that based on some minor testing, I would currently say the Glaxion is maybe the weakest overall of all the beam weapons. Uh, but yeah, the beam work rework, it was a success. Spoilers, I guess. So that, that's what's up. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it's not too long. Uh, and I will see you guys tomorrow.